grasslands. A treeless, windswept continent of grass, stretching from the broad Texas panhandle up through the mountain reaches of Montana to the Canadian border. A country of high winds and sun. High winds and sun. Without rivers, without streams, with little rain. fenced range a thousand miles long, an uncharted ocean of grass, the southern range for winter grazing, and the mountain plateaus for summer. It was a cattleman's paradise. Rio Grande, in from the rolling prairies, down clear from the eastern highlands, the cattle rolled into the old buffalo range. Fortunes in beef. For a decade, the world discovered the grasslands and poured cattle into the plains. The railroads brought markets to the edge of the plains. Land syndicates sprang up overnight and the cattle rolled into the west. Populations, new needs crowded the last frontier. Once again, the plowman followed the herder, and the pioneer came to the plains. Make way for the plowman. without rivers and with little rain. Settler, plow at your peril. Two hundred miles from water, two hundred miles from town, but the land is new.
many were disappointed. The rains failed and the sun baked the light soil. Many left. They fought the loneliness and the hard years. The rains failed them.
golden harvest. Then we really ploughed the plain. We turned under millions of new acres for wool. We had the manpower. We invented new machinery. The world was our market. become the new wheat land. A hundred million acres, two hundred million acres, more wheat. without rivers, without streams, with little rain. Once again, the rains held off and the sun baked the earth. This time, no grass held moisture against the winds and the sun. This time, millions of acres of plowed land lay open to the sun.
Complaining, they fought the worst drought in history. Their stock choked to death on the barren land. Their homes were nightmares of swirling dust, night and day. Many went ahead of them, but many stayed until stock, machinery, homes, credit, food, and even hope were gone. Pacific Coast, the last border. Blown out, baked out, and broke. Nothing to stay for, nothing to hope for. Homeless, penniless, and bewildered, they joined the great army of the highway. No place to go, and no place to stop. Nothing to eat, nothing to do. Their homes on four wheels, their work, a desperate gamble for a day's labor in the fields along the highway. The price of a sack of beans or a tank of gas. All they ask is a chance to start over, and a chance for their children to eat, to have medical care, to have homes again. 50,000 a month, the sun and winds wrote the most tragic chapter in American agriculture.
400 million acres, the Great Plains seemed inexhaustible. Yet in 50 years, we turned a part of it into a dust bowl. We put too many cattle and sheep in it. We granted homesteads of rangeland that never should have been plowed. We tore up grass for war needs. We invented new machinery, making it possible for one man cheaply to plow thousands of acres. An unprecedented drought completed the havoc. There was no grass left to hold the light soil against the high winds. The 50-year record, 40 million acres of land ruined perhaps forever. 200 million acres badly damaged. A great part of this vast area of damaged land can be saved. And the federal government has worked strenuously during the past few years to restore these lands. The Soil Conservation Service, the Forest Service, the CCC, and the Resettlement Administration are cooperating with the Department of Agriculture in working 65 land improvement projects in the plains. The Resettlement Administration will take title to 5,800,000 acres of this land and put it to its proper agricultural use. On a second front, the federal government is working to rehabilitate the stricken farmers of the drought area. Various emergency agencies have distributed millions of dollars in direct relief and thousands of farmers from dire poverty. The Resettlement Administration has loaned millions to farmers whose lands were not damaged beyond repair but who needed seed, farm equipment, and credit in order to carry on. Most important, the Resettlement Administration is taking over 4,500 farms in the drought area, and it will move families from this land that cannot be farmed into natural agricultural districts. Model farmsteads such as this one being constructed in Nebraska are being built to house these resettled farmers and they not only will be paid for their old farms, but they will be given a chance to buy their new homes on long-term credit. Modern equipment, irrigation, good lands, electricity, sanitation, schools. The Resettlement Administration is bringing these benefits to thousands who are left stranded and without hope. But the winds still blow and the sun still bakes the land. We must practice control and conservation if we are to save the rest of the grass. The rains will come again, the plow will dig again. Another decade of reckless use, and the grasslands will truly be the great American desert.